Good morning, everyone. Since it's a little after 10, I would like to officially start our meeting. My name is Ayabami Bell Torrance. I am the outreach manager for DDOT. I just want to thank you all for joining us today for our first public meeting involving the Coolidge Terminal Project. You will have an opportunity to learn about this project and provide feedback. Please note that we are limiting comments, comments to those that involve the Coolidge only and that we may be, not be able to respond to all comments this morning. Also know that by participating in this Zoom meeting, you are granting permission for your name, your image and likeness, as well as audio and video recordings to be used by DDOT. Now, before, uh, before I go any further, I would like to introduce our Executive Director of Transit, Mr. Michael Oglesby. Hello, welcome, uh, Ayabami, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. Uh, well, welcome everybody. This is an exciting time. We can't wait to get this building up and going. So welcome to our Coolidge public meeting. You'll hear about the history of Coolidge. Um, I won't steal their thunder, uh, but there's a lot of information that we have for you today. But in short, Gilbert is our oldest uh, terminal and this project's been welcomed, uh, is gonna be welcomed uh, by operators and uh, the mechanics that just can't wait till this takes place. We currently have a fleet of 288 uh, vehicles and a portion of our vehicles will uh, be in this garage, but there will be plenty of opportunity for growth. And we anticipate housing uh, many of our vehicles there, uh, type, different type of vehicles there, including our 60 foot um, articulated buses. So this project provides um, an opportunity for growth, which is really uh, the forefront of what we're trying to do with DDOT Reimagined, which some of you have heard about, which is a comprehensive operational analysis and or otherwise known as the future of DDOT and where we go. So this, this um, will be a very instrumental part in that. So with that, let me hand it off to the DBA and they'll, they can go ahead and introduce themselves and explain the involvement. But again, welcome to our Coolidge public meeting. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Director Oglesby. My name is Tyrone Clifford. I'm the director of the Detroit Building Authority. Uh, a little bit about the Detroit Building Authority. We're responsible for large scale capital projects. Um, in the past, uh, we've done numerous projects with the Department of Transportation that have been very successful. Um, including the, uh, the Shoemaker project that was uh, renovated a couple of years ago. So we're very excited about the Coolidge project. It's a large project. It's a very important project to, to DDOT and the community. So we get that uh, and we feel fortunate to be a part of the team that's going to produce it. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn that over to the senior project manager, Donna Rice, and she can introduce her team is going to help produce this project for DDOT, Ms. Rice. Thank you and good morning to everyone. So the, the project team that is working um, as consultants are uh, DLZ of Michigan and along with uh, HDR. Um, they are performing the um, design services for the project. And then the estimate and pre-construction services are being performed by the joint venture Brinker Christman um, team um, also located here in the uh, Detroit metropolitan area. With that, um, I will turn it over now to uh, Ms. Torrance. Thank you very much. And thank you all for the introductions. Welcome. We are going to begin our presentation. Just give us one moment, please. Okay, so we're all here for the Coolidge Terminal Rehabilitation Project. I'd like to start with an overview. DDOT is proposing to construct a new bus maintenance, storage, and operations center on the existing Coolidge Terminal site. The purpose of this meeting is to give a brief history of the Coolidge Terminal to provide details on the project, including the Federal Transit Administration FDA involvement, 
to describe our public involvement efforts, and of course, to ask your feedback. So a little brief history, the Coolidge Terminal and Maintenance Facility is located at 14044 Schaefer Highway in Detroit. Now it operated transit services from 1928 until 2011. In December 2011, a fire destroyed part of the facility, halting operations. Further, the city of Detroit's bankruptcy halted reconstruction plans. And now fast forward, DDOT is proposing a new construction project. So the Coolidge Terminal is going to replace the Gilbert Terminal. Now, the Gilbert Terminal is located at 5600 Wabash, stores and maintains the buses that were once at Coolidge, but can no longer do so. Now, the use of the property is no longer suitable for DDOT and will be decommissioned after the new Coolidge Terminal is built. The buses at Gilbert Terminal will be moved over to the new Coolidge Terminal. DDOT plans to construct a new bus maintenance storage and operations center on the existing Coolidge Terminal site. The current site will be cleared and all six existing structures will be demolished. Now here's a look at the current layout. Understand we do have a few people on the phone. This uh, image and uh, presentation will be available later for just a brief look at the current layout so that you know that what we're talking about. Okay, so DDOT is also using some ad adjacent properties that's owned by Detroit Land Bank Authority. Now the Detroit Land Bank Authority has agreed to transfer the parcels to DDOT. More about the plans, the new facility will accommodate 24 hour operations and initially 144 buses with the capacity to span up to 216 buses in the future. Uh, three new buildings will be constructed during the project. Again, bus storage and coach services, fleet maintenance with part storeroom and operations and administration buildings. Now the new facility will be able to better service the 40 foot and 60 foot buses and service charge buses using alternative fuel technologies. Now the site will also include a 245 space parking lot now that will be dedicated mainly for DDOT staff, including operators, maintenance, and operations and administration personnel. The facility is expected to be completed in 2024. And here's a look at the conceptual site plan. Again, for those on the phone, this will be available later. And I believe this actually image is on our website at this time. Okay. So we talked about the FTA involvement, the Federal Transit Administration. The FTA is providing funding for this project and is serving as the lead federal agency working with DDOT to assess the potential social, economic, and environmental impacts of this proposed project. The National Environmental Policy Act of 1969, Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, Section 4F of the US DOT Act of 1966. When it comes to alternatives, DDOT considered three alternatives to meet the current needs. Those were the reuse of the existing buildings, the reuse of some of the buildings supplementing with new construction where applicable, or full replacement of the Coolidge Terminal with all new construction. So DDOT determined that all new construction at this site is the preferred alternative and would allow DDOT to resume bus operations at this facility. Now, it's important to note that there will be no impact on transit schedules. Section 106 and Section 4F, the Coolidge Terminal is considered eligible for the National Register of Historic Places, the NRHP, and protected under Section 106 and Section 4F regulations. Now, the project will cause an adverse effect to the historic property. Section 106 consultation with interested parties and tribes has begun, and we welcome your thoughts on mitigation options. Now, mitigation for the adverse effect will be identified as a commitment in the NEPA environmental assessment. 
the environmental assessment will include section 4F evaluation. When it comes to public involvement, again, DDOT is in the design phase of this project, so very early. Additional public meetings will take place. The second meeting is expected in September and will focus more on the environmental impacts of this project. A public hearing is expected to take place in November or December where additional details of the environmental assessment will be provided along with the opportunity for public comments. Now, in the meantime, you can stay up to date with information and that is available on our website at DetroitMI.gov forward slash DDOT. There's a special section and we will update that as more information becomes available. And at this time, it is now time for public comments. I just want to remind everyone, please limit your comments to two minutes to ensure that everyone gets a chance to speak. Um, we are accepting comments only for Coolidge Project, which is what we're here um, today for. And as always, no personal attacks or foul language will be tolerated. And I'd like to turn it over now to my colleague, Kristen, to call our first person. Great, the first hand up is Robert. Good morning, can I be heard? Yes. Perfect, Robert Pulaski here from Southgate and Wayne County. Um, I'd just like to say that this is project has been one of the main priorities of DDOT for almost a decade. And just to watch it finally be reused and finally put Gilbert Terminal out of its commission, from all the routes it's being based out of, we're finally seeing growth. Um, when I was at the fairgrounds for the press conference back in November, you know, watching history be, you know, put back together and use it for something more utilized than just letting it sit. It's absolutely amazing. And now we're finally seeing more progress. You know, when it comes to the pictures, the design layouts, it's absolutely amazing. It, it's what we need to see in Detroit. It's called the future and the working conditions that, because I've talked to former DDOT drivers and DDOT drivers currently. I actually know one DDOT, former DDOT driver that works out of the Wayne Terminal and Inkster for SMART. And he said the conditions at the Gilbert Terminal were absolutely atrocious. And now with this Coolidge Terminal coming back into place, he might even reconsider coming back to DDOT with this new building, because that means there's more opportunity and there's gonna be less bad working conditions compared to other terminals that have been used for two decades, three decades, you know, going and so on. So I just want to commend DDOT for all the hard work and also the Detroit Building Authority for just working out this project and also putting a lot of time to think because this is the future of DDOT. And if we can get more terminals like this and improve the old ones that we have currently, the more electric buses we can put on the road, the more we can service these. I believe the Coolidge Terminal will be the probably the most permanent home for these buses as soon as it opens up because the way Shoemaker is laid out now it's not gonna be able to handle it, especially once we get more fleet. So that, that's the only concern I have. But other than that, th this is a well done project and I wanna commend everyone at DDOT, including Michael Oglesby for all the hard work we put into this. But you know, keep up the good work, you're doing a good thing. And I look forward to providing you guys more feedback during public meetings or not, but uh, keep it up and uh, hope to talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much, Robert. Um, the next hand up, uh, give me one second. Next hand up I see is a phone number ending in 669. Can you hear me? This is Brother Cunningham. Yes, go ahead. Okay, usually I, I had a hard time with the regular Zoom, so I called in. But I just wanted to, I was, I don't know who to point this to and how are you guys going to ensure that city residents do the construction on this building? Um, and since I'm not on public streams, not part of an organization and nothing like that, black people, young black people from high school, young black people from college, young black people that, or not just black people, natives, they can be of any color of the city of Detroit. Uh, is there any uh, mechanism or any type of um, emphasis on those that lived in the city, worked in the city, get benefits with the contract and with employment? Is there any incentivism 
for the contractors to get Detroiters, which is, might be hard, um, but to get Detroiters to do the work on this building, um, even doing marketing to get Detroiters to um, know the jobs are available, um, a system in getting Detroiters, which might be difficult, but again, that's just all I kept thinking. Will black folks or just natives of any color, Detroiters, um, be first choice in the construction? You know, all the construction you see in the city, you always see other races and people who are not from here. I, you, you would think, and just from a layman's person, that are they're not Detroiters. You know, and they're getting all the money, $16, 17 $18 an hour plus, and uh, it's irritating. And I thank God I'm not on puppet strings. There's no organization to smack my hand. I'm just I'm just saying what I feel. Um, will natives have priority on the construction of this project? Native Detroiters, not Native Americans. Native Detroiters. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, um, Mr. Oglesby, for all your hard work, sir, and your cordialness towards me, and Miss Walsh, and etc. Thank you so much. Thank you kindly. Have a great weekend. You too. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Black Do folks. We... <laughs> Noted. Uh, <laughs> I don't see a lot of, I don't see any additional hands. Did we want to uh, make any additional comments? Hi, Aya, Aya, I'm sorry, Aya Bombi. Tyrone, Dire Executive Director, Detroit Building Authority. Um, just um, speaking to the last comment, obviously the Detroit Building Authority has a very good track record of hiring uh, Detroit headquartered minority firms to, to do capital work. Um, obviously, we went down the road, we, we've landed with the, the vendors that we have that was based on, on the qualifications. They've all got experiences and resources to do that. Um, Brinker Chrisman, which is doing a lot of work around the city, but they also have a lot of good resources. Uh, the Brinker uh, team is a second generation minority owned black construction firm um, that has committed to making sure that Detroiters participate on their projects, whether it's subcontractors or the actual workforce. Um, so we look forward to continuing that relationship even on this uh, fairly funded future uh, DDOT project. Director. Uh, Clifton, and also if I could add um, one thing that the DBA, um, as director indicated, it's it's um, that's important to um, um, us as well to have representation um, of all folks in the city of Detroit. And um, although the minimum DBE disadvantaged business enterprise um, um, requirement um, um, was lower than what the DB uh, with than what the DBA um, goals were, we've actually increased it to, our goal is to have 30% um, participation, um, which again is higher than what um, even the FTA requires. So um, understanding that the uh, workforce, it is difficult to get um, um, people, um, but that is a, a commitment that the DBA um, does have to the project. Thank you both for providing additional details to that comment. Were there anyone else that would like to provide feedback at this time that did not raise their hand or would like to put in the chat that we can read? Kristen, do you see anybody? No new hands. Okay, with that, do any other closing remarks? I'll, I'll add some closing remarks. I think that um, we shouldn't be discouraged from the lack of questions. We should be encouraged because I think that shows that we're going down the right path. I think people just want us to get this building up and running. They trust that we are doing it the right way. We are following all of the policies and procedures up to including 
public meetings to give them an opportunity to speak. And um, I think we need to just keep pushing forward. And this will be a project that will not, not only uh, be important for DDOT, but for the city of Detroit and the other opportunities that will be linked to it from DDOT Reimagined. We may be able to do some real creative things once we get this, um, this building up and running. So uh, we're encouraged. We appreciate everybody's comment. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Thank you so much, Mr. Oglesby. And with that, I would like to conclude our meeting. Thank you all again for joining us and look forward for more information. Have a good day.